Well, welcome to Middle Ridge Church Ungathered uh, on this 22nd of, of March. With church doors shutting across the nation, it's time for us to know uh, that the church has never been the building and following the way of Christ has never been about 60 minutes on a Sunday morning. We are called to be the church in every day and in every way. And at a time like this, when our nation, and in fact every nation is in crisis, uh, the church comes into its own. It's for a time like this uh, that we exist. Let's listen to the beautiful words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters and restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I never cease to be amazed about how the planned readings for our church year speak into our current situation again and again. It's what I've come to understand the living word of God is all about. And so here uh, this week, uh, as our nation and as many nations around the world uh, shut down in the face of coronavirus, we are offered the reading that speaks of God's faithfulness even though we walk in the shadow of the valley of death. In Italy, over the last three days, uh, more than 2,000 people have died. That nation, among many others, is walking in the shadow of the valley of death. And we are told that we do not have to fear when we are in this place and that God is with us. And God is with us in down-to-earth and very real ways. Psalm 23 talks about, about an earthy, hands-on shepherd, the one who sleeps in the fields with his sheep and guards them day and night, the one who, who stays with the sheep in good times when the grass is green and plentiful, and in hard times, when water may be scarce and death through thirst or starvation may threaten. In my experience as a chaplain, accompanying people through the last days of their life, Psalm 23 is the most requested psalm when I ask people what would you like me to read you from scripture today? There is a deep peace and assurance in it. And again and again when people request it, and when I read it to them out of my little dog-eared uh, hand Bible, uh, a great sense of peace uh, comes upon both of us. Tradition says that Psalm 23 is written by David and it speaks of the experience of a youngest son who was overlooked by his many older brothers. They didn't think he mattered for anything except tending the family's sheep. And as a boy, David would have been left alone in the depth of night many times, feeling vulnerable feeling frightened. 
not knowing where to turn to for comfort. But now, as David writes this psalm as a mature man, he writes with the wisdom of one who is able to reflect on that early experience in his life and understand what it means. He understands what restoration means and he writes about it from the sheep's perspective. He talks about the sheep knowing that they are being guided and protected by the shepherd. And he speaks of the trust that develops between the sheep and the shepherd. And then David recalls his own experience of being anointed and called when he would least expect it and what that meant for him. That affirmation of God's presence with him and God's blessing upon him even as he struggled with the realities of life. The beauty of these words can speak to us today. We find ourselves in a time that no one could have predicted, let alone expected. And our, our world is being assaulted uh, by images that we could not have imagined. People fighting um, over toilet paper uh, in supermarkets. People shouting at supermarket staff and getting angry in pharmacies and stealing things from each other's doorsteps. It is in a time such as this that the church has an amazing role to play as a source of light and kindness in our neighbourhoods. Not in the gathered context, because we are unable to gather for the time being. But in the ungathered context, we are to be light in our neighbourhoods. There's been a, a, a post uh, going around on social media, started by a young girl who was only 12. And she wrote uh, a note that she put in the letterbox uh, of her neighbours, saying, this is Sarah from number, whatever her address was, her, her, her house and street number. And she said, I'm your neighbour and I'm here to help you if you need help. If you are too frail and are afraid of going down to the shops, uh, please ring me on this number and I'll be happy to go and do some shopping for you. If you have run out of sugar or milk, ring me and I will bring you some. There are so many things that we can do as followers of Christ to be light in our neighbourhood at this time. Even though our buildings are shut, the life of the church is not cancelled. The life of the church is actually ramped up. This is our time to be sent out from the building and to shine a light in our neighbourhoods. Be the light, my friends. Be the light that shines in the darkness. Amen. We have a prayer for the people. Dear Lord, in this time where the future seems so uncertain, we ask that you be with us and with our families. People all around the globe are stricken with panic and hoarding everything they can find. Help them to find peace and to trust in your promise that you will provide for us so that they can be considerate for others. The media coverage of this situation is excessive and at times misleading. We ask that they be aware of the power that they hold and report responsibly and help us to be discerning. Help those of us who serve the public, our teachers, pharmacists, retail staff and so many others who are bearing the brunt of our frustrations and panic Help them to find your peace and comfort amidst the chaos. Our medical staff are taking up a heavy burden with little prospect of relief in the coming months. Lord, give them strength 
and help them in their hour of need, as they are helping us in our hour of need. Help us to be courteous and supportive as to not add additional burdens while they are working hard for us. We pray for those who are stricken with illness and those who are struggling to cope with isolation. Help us to find new ways to comfort them and connect with them whilst adhering to medical guidelines. We thank you for technology, which helps us to cope with this challenging situation and connects us with friends and family that we cannot see in person. We pray that you guide our leaders into making wise, ethical and kind decisions to support those who are struggling with loss of work, separation from loved ones and economic hardship. Help them to take their responsibility seriously and to rise to the situation at hand. Ultimately, we pray for strength, compassion, grace and creativity for all of us in the coming months, so that we may be a light and the hope that the world needs right now. Be with us on our journey forward. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, my friends, go into the week ahead and know that you do not go alone. Remember that the most challenging places cause our hearts to sing the most beautiful songs. The shadow of death and illness may make it dark in the valley for some time. But in these moments, you are called to be like seeds in the soil, finding the right moment to put your roots deep down into your relationship with God and send out shoots of kindness and generosity into your neighbourhood around you. May your hearts find rest in what you cannot see. And may your ears hear beauty that others may not decipher. And may you rest in the mystery of God's love for all creation, now and forever. Amen.